Welcome to Zilla Tales. Today, we embark on a fascinating exploration of a theory that challenges conventional views of biblical geography. Could it be that the ancient land of Canaan, referred in the Bible, is actually located in Kenya? While it might sound far-fetched, there are some intriguing connections worth investigating. In this series, we'll take an objective look at the evidence, biblical texts, archaeological finds, and natural geography to see if this claim holds any merit. We'll let you decide for yourself. Mount Nebo or Mount Algon Our journey begins at Mount Algon, a towering peak in the Kenya-Uganda border. Some researchers and enthusiasts have proposed that Mount Elgon could be the biblical Mount Nebo, the place where Moses saw the promised land before the Israelites crossed into Canaan. According to this theory, Kenya could be that very land. But what's the basis for this claim? Let's look at this biblical passage from Joshua 3:14 to 16. So it was, when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan, that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zeratan. Proponents of this theory suggest that Adam could correspond to Endebis, a town at the foot of Mount Elgon. They argue that the Jordan River in this village is actually the Nzoya River, which runs nearby. But can the geography of this region really fit the biblical description? Let's explore the possibilities. Mount Elgon, like many mountains, is prone to landslides, natural events that can block rivers and change landscapes dramatically. During flooding seasons, the Nzoya River can swell and overflow much like the Jordan in the Bible. Some suggest that a landslide could have blocked the river, creating a temporary dam that allowed the Israelites to cross. While this is plausible, is it enough to definitively link these locations to the biblical narrative? That's still up for debate. Farther downstream, the Takwal River flows into Lake Turkana, a large saline body of water. Could this be the biblical Sea of Araba? The geography does seem to align, but again, the evidence is mostly circumstantial. For now, it remains an interesting theory, one that deserves a more thorough investigation. Biblical names in modern Kenya One of the most striking claims made by those who support this theory is that modern Kenyan towns carry biblical names altered slightly over time. For example, Kericho is proposed to be Jericho, Gilgil to be Gilgal, and Elbagon to be Mount Ebal. Could these similarities in names be a clue, or are they just coincidences? Names do change over time, and it's possible that ancient names could have been preserved in some form. But it is also worth considering that these names could have evolved independently of any biblical connections. As we delve deeper, it is important to approach the claims with caution. There is often a temptation to see connections where none exist, especially when dealing with ancient texts that are open to interpretation. In the area of Gilgil, said to be Biblical Gilgal, archaeologists, including the renowned Richard Leakey, have uncovered thousands of ancient tools. Could these be remnants of the Israelites' camp after they crossed the Jordan? Perhaps, but without direct evidence linking these tools to the Biblical narrative, the connection remains speculative. The Fall of Jericho or Kericho One of the most well-known stories from the Bible is the Fall of Jericho, where the Israelites marched around the city for seven days before its walls collapsed. According to this theory, Kericho is the real Jericho, and its location along fault lines in the Rift Valley could explain how the city's walls came tumbling down after sustained pressure from the Israelites' march and the sound of their trumpets. But does this explanation hold up under scrutiny? While it's true that fault lines can weaken structures, there is no definitive evidence that this was the cause of Jericho's fall, if Kericho is even Jericho at all. The connection is intriguing, but far from conclusive. And while local legends and biblical stories can sometimes intersect, it is important to separate fact from tradition. Could this be an ancient city tied to biblical events? Or is it simply another example of geological activity? The evidence, at least for now, remains thin. The role of archaeology and suppression of evidence? Some proponents of this theory believe that much of Kenya's ancient history has been deliberately hidden. They point to archaeological expeditions by the British, including Richard Leakey's work, as evidence that foreign powers knew about Kenya's biblical significance, but kept this information from the public. But is this really the case? 
or are we simply looking at the normal challenges of piecing together ancient history? It's true that much of Africa's archaeological record has been disrupted by colonization, and many important artifacts were removed or lost. But without more concrete evidence, it is difficult to say whether this was part of a deliberate cover-up or just the unfortunate result of history. The idea that Kenya is the true Canaan remains an open question, and while there are tantalizing clues, it's important not to jump to conclusions. As we've seen today, the theory that Kenya is the true biblical land of Canaan is certainly fascinating, but it raises more questions than answers. Could Mount Elgon really be Mount Nebo? Could the Nzoia River be the Jordan? And are Kenyan towns really the remnants of ancient biblical cities? For now, we don't have definitive proof, but the evidence is worth exploring further. In the next episode, we'll dive even deeper into these connections, examining more sites across Kenya and their potential ties to the biblical story. If you're curious to see where this journey leads, be sure to subscribe to Zile Tales and join us as we continue to investigate the mysteries of ancient Canaan. Until next time.